All right, folks, let's take a look. Uh, this is a quick demo of what we just showed in the blog post. Uh, the goal here is what I want to be able to have is a Terraform Enterprise configuration. I'll show you that this is our Terraform Enterprise UI. So I'm in Terraform Enterprise. What I've got now is a simple configuration. I've got a set of defined variables, which I'm using a variable to define how things are going to be sized inside my code. We'll actually take a look at it. And let's take a look. We're going to start with the code. So there's a couple of different things here. Uh, if we look, take a look at the code in my GitHub, you'll be able to see this uh, follow along with the uh, what we've got. So my, my main configuration, so the main Terraform file, is a simple AMI, carving it out. Uh, and then what we can do is we see the instance type and the instance size is being generated from a variable. Uh, normal provider, so I've got this set up. Here's my configuration. And then my variables are defined to make sure that I'm pulling turbonomic instance size. The reason it's called turbonomic instance size is because eventually my next step is to actually connect this so that turbonomic is going to continuously drive the optimization. I've actually already done that. Uh, blog is going to follow on that one. So what it's going to do is always go through here and read this configuration in order to decide what size it should be. Okay, let's take a look at how it's going to interact with this. So the first thing I've got to do is I've got to go through uh, what I call, this is my TFE T8C, so uh, Terraform Enterprise and Turbonomic Update. Uh, what I'm doing is it's a, a simple bash script. I'm requiring that I'm going to use the command line, so it's, it's TFA T8C update the organization name, the workspace name, and then the instance size. So I've got to pass this through. If it does not go, then it's going to bail out. I take, I define my organization and my workspace name based on the parameters. I create the URL because it's actually the, those org and workspaces are embedded inside the URL. Now in the uh, turbo instance size, I'm pulling it from the parameters that I passed to the command line script. The first thing I've got to do is I'm going to go through and look for the variable inside Terraform Enterprise. So I've got to go through, I've already defined my TF underscore token. This is my Terraform API key. The reason I've called it TF underscore token, if you look at all the docs in Terraform, everything is just dollar sign token. So I've done it so I purposefully can't accidentally do the, the thing uh, if I've got it defined and, and shared between different things. So I've got TF underscore token. You're going to see also GH underscore token. So the first thing I do is I go through, I pull, and I look for this key name, Turbonomic Instance Size. Then from there, what I do is I actually get this. I use JQ to actually pull out. So I parse it through with JQ to pull the ID, and it has quotation marks around it. So I'm actually going to use said to strip off the quotation marks and then set that as a environment variable locally wherever the script is being run. I take the JSON, this is a new environment variable called var JSON data. We're going to take that information and pass it in so that I can go and then take that information and pass it to the update. So we're going to use a patch uh, rather than a put or a post. So thank you, uh, HashiCorp, for making use of the, the patch uh, crud. Even though it's, it's funny, I guess they can't call it crud, it's crupta. Uh, so what we do is we're going to take the data is the var JSON data that I sent it. Uh, I've setting my instance size based on where I'm going to pull it from. And then let's take a look here. So if I go and I say this, so TFE, THC. So my organization name is called Turbonomic. My workspace is TFE uh, Turbonomic dash demo. And let's take a look at what the size is right now. Uh, so T32XL, so I'm going to actually, we're going to say make it T3X large. So just like the old magician, right? You can see there's nothing up my sleeves. We're going to run this process and boom. Okay, so we see all this uh, happy output, which means that things were done right. It tells me what the variable name was that it pulled in the ID, what the instance size is going to be, and let's take a look. We're back here. I'm going to refresh. That was t3.2x large, and now it is t3.x large. So that's our successful update. Now, the next piece we're going to get is we have to actually trigger how this works. 
Now the neat thing about triggering the update of your workspace, if you do it through the GUI, it's easy, just queue a plan. If you do it through the CLI, easy, just do a Terraform plan. If you want to use this, but it's connected to a version control system, not so friendly. So if I go to my GitHub, let's take a look here. Uh, let's actually just drop right into the script. So here's my, my root. What I've got is my trigger file. So I've created this individual file that I'm going to update. And the reason I have to do it this way, in order to upload a configuration and interact with it the API, I need to literally upload the entire file set. But because it's version control backed, I don't want to do that. Okay, so let's go back in. Now that's our next script. I've got it separated into two bits here, just so I can show you individually what works. So I'm going to actually trigger a commit through the GitHub API. So I'm going to use, I'm setting my trigger URL, I've defined it here. Uh, and then from there, I'm going to say the content, it's going to be, I'm just going to set the date I'm using. It has to be base 64 encoded. So you actually uh, just push the date in and base 64 encode it. I'm going to set the date uh, as well as a short code so that I can actually identify this in the commit message. I have to set this particular parameter type because I want to get rid of spaces and special characters. I have to find out the, sh the SHA signature because I need to know, first of all, how to update it. If I'm creating a file, I don't need that because it's brand new, but I'm going to continuously update the same trigger file. So if someone else changes it or gets deleted and recreated and the SHA signature is updated. So I'm going to go and I'm using the GitHub URL. Again, here's my GitHub token. So I've created an API key that has the ability to update the rights. Trigger SHA goes through, it runs a curl, put, passes it to JQ, looks for the SHA. Uh, then it actually runs said to strip off the quote. And then I create my JSON data. I'm going to push this in. This is going to be my commit message here. So I'm saying this trigger date, uh, who the committer is, uh, and I'm going to say it's, I'm going to just put my own email in there. You can put all your own content in here. And then here's the variables that we're pulling in. And then what it's going to do is do a put request to the GitHub, to the particular file, because I'm actually setting it with a trigger URL. So it's exactly pointing all the way down to the file. So you can see that that's in there. Uh, you can, in the actual blog post where you're probably seeing this from, I've got the links to show where the two different API sets are. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, normally you could click on this queue plan. We're gonna leave it on the runs here and I'm gonna do this now. Git trigger. Okay, so we trigger this. Happiness goes, and now let's take a look here. Now I've actually got this connected up with my uh, with my Turbonomic uh, Slack as well. So what I'm gonna see is I'm actually gonna get my first notification through Slack. It tells me that there's a run that's planning. If I go to the, the UI, you can see the planning is happening here. So it's gonna go through and, and do this. Okay, it says, all right, zero to add, one to change, because remember we changed it from 2XL to XL. And now you have the option. Oh, look at that. It is auto applied just like that. So in this case, I've actually configured it. And I'll show you in a second that I've set it for auto apply. So it didn't even wait because I've set it in this particular workspace to just go for it. As long as it's a valid configuration, it will run. So the plan ran successfully. I go back. Let's take a look here and you can see the runs applying. So you get all the notifications through this collaborative team method using Slack. And you can see here, here was my date string. So that every time I do a run, I'm making sure that I, I push that in. You know where it came from, especially because we may have ones that come from different locations. I'll quickly show you here. So I've got some that are actually coming where this is a straight merge. So I'm actually doing an update uh, from my command line in GitHub. Now uh, we've got some that are coming from a different instance. So I've actually associated the name of it based on where it's coming from. There's a few different ways we can handle that. Just wait here for the pot, proverbial pot to boil. It's going through and it's restarting the instance and applying the new instance type to it. And now we've done a quick fast forward as you can see in the, the timing here. So it shows it took about four and a half minutes or four minutes, 40 seconds to run. I didn't want to make you sit through that. So there we go. We actually see what happened. And quickly, I'll just show you a couple of configuration steps. Number one, 
I've set this to be remote execution mode because I want to collaborate amongst a bunch of folks. I've got it set as auto apply. I have a high trust in, in my automation. And so that's how we're, we're running. So this way, no matter where it comes from, it just it plans. If the plan is successful, it will auto apply. And that's it. So you're going to see how to, to do those together. So if you go to my GitHub repo, if you go to github.com forward slash, forward slash discoposse, you can see the TFE Turbonomic demo code, and that's going to stay there, and, and I'll update some content. Uh, so hopefully this is helpful, and keep watching for much more around kind of my Terraform enterprise and, and how I'm actually connecting to the full automation inside Turbonomic.